from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The 2006 Holiday Lectures on Science. This year's lectures, Potent Biology, Stem Cells, Cloning, and Regeneration, will be given by Dr. Douglas Melton, Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator at Harvard University, and Dr. Nadia Rosenthal, senior scientist at the European Molecular Biology Laboratory. The second lecture is titled, Adult Stem Cells and Regeneration. And now to introduce our program, the Vice President for Grants and Special Programs of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, Dr. Peter Bruns. Well, thanks for rejoining us for these lectures on stem cells. Uh, before I introduce our next speaker, I'm going to make a short commercial message here for our other website called biointeractive.org. Uh, I recommend highly that you go to that site and take a look what's there. You'll find all sorts of interactive things, uh, animations, virtual labs, streaming video of previous holiday lectures, and all sorts of links to other places of, of, that are relevant for the topics. Uh, you also on that site can order for free DVDs of any of the uh, holiday lectures. Uh, and as Tom mentioned before, uh, starting next week, we're going to be putting on that site uh, the, the lectures as podcasts as well. So our next speaker is Nadia Rosenthal, who's the lab director and senior scientist at the European Molecular Biology Lab uh, in Italy. It's a reflection of the international nature of science that she uh, has a lab that is uh, full of people from all over the world uh, working on her topic uh, and uh, asking how basic science can yield uh, medical breakthroughs. Uh, Nadia has long been interested in understanding how muscle cells develop and function, uh, which has led uh, to her interest in regeneration and aging. In her first lecture, she'll focus on the role of stem cells in wound healing and regeneration. So here's a short video to introduce Nadia. Obviously, living in Italy is a, a wonderful inspiration. And in fact, as a child, I uh, was obsessed with the Renaissance. So to come back and spend uh, as much time as I possibly can when I'm not in the lab roaming the churches and looking at the art that uh, just suffuses this, this city in Rome is an absolute delight. A lot of the people in the lab are also really enjoying the fact that we live in Italy. Uh, it hasn't been hard to recruit people to come and work in this lab because of the wonderful city we sit in. I've been aware of the, the responsibility for teaching, and not just teaching, but teaching in a way that is inspiring and is engaging. Uh, it's unfair to ask a young adult to sit and listen to you unless you're telling them something that's really interesting. I find science endlessly interesting, so I have to figure out a way to make it as interesting to the students that I teach. The holiday lectures are a wonderful institution. I've already, uh, in, I think, engaged just about my entire lab uh, in, the, in the project uh, to convey to as many young people as possible the excitement that we feel in stem cell research. And it'll be a real challenge for Doug Melton and me to uh, meet the same sort of standards that we've seen in some of the previous uh, lecture series. But we're lucky because we have a really exciting uh, subject to work with. Stem cells are something that everybody's heard about. And what we're hoping to be able to do with this series is to make it crystal clear exactly what stem cells are, what they can and can't do, and why scientists are so excited about working on them. Buongiorno, ragazzi. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to go on in Italian, but it's really wonderful to be here, and specifically to be here with all of you. I have to say that it was just about when I was your age, when I was 15, that I first became obsessed with biology. I had a fantastic teacher in high school, and I was thinking I was going to be an artist. And I got this, uh, this, this course that just made me realize that this was absolutely what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. 
And I think that the excitement of biology is very infectious, and I hope that some of you will get it and catch it at this, at this event. I'm also very excited to be able to do this with Doug, who for many years has shared with me this insatiable curiosity for developing embryos. But today I'm going to talk specifically about my most favorite topic of this particular part of my life, which is regeneration. So from Doug, you heard that the embryonic stem cell, the ultimate embryonic stem cell, which is the fertilized egg, can give rise to a number of different tissues, in fact, to all of the tissues in your body. And it does so with a gradual process of differentiation and specification into these tissues that you see rendered here. But what Doug touched on and what I'm going to spend the rest of my time talking to you about is the fact that we must keep the deep and uh, very complex formation of our body intact for the entire time we're alive. We have to keep our skin intact. We have to keep our bones intact. And even uh, such very highly turning over tissues uh, as some of the tissues that Doug mentioned have to stay the same shape, the size, and the function has to remain as well. So we're going to be talking about replenishment and renewal which actually is happening even in you as young people. It's happening as soon as you form your body. And so it's a very interesting and engaging part of science. Now, I'll just point out a few of the organs that we know are very good at replenishing themselves. And Doug mentioned these. In the intestine, we are continuously sloughing off cells inside of our intestinal wall in response to the food that passes through. And that has to be continuously renewed or the liver. The liver clears our, our system, our circulation of toxins and waste products, and therefore has a heavy duty job. The liver cells turn over and new ones are replacing all the time. And finally, our skin, which of course is our barrier to the outside world, is something that is getting sloughed off all the time and has to be replaced and replaced and replaced. And for those tissues, there are specialized cells that are set aside to do this very job. So are those um, daily replenishing and renewing um, kinds of processes regeneration? What is regeneration? We hear a lot about regeneration. In fact, most of the beauty products that make your skin look better um, are apparently touted as great regeneration agents. So I'd like to actually get down to the real meaning of regeneration as we as biologists consider it. And to do so, I'm going to use a myth the myth of Prometheus. So the ancients were very much aware of regeneration. In, that's clear from this myth that came out of the ancient world in which Prometheus, who is this giant titan, uh, stole fire from the gods. And fire stood for art and civilization. And he gave it to humans. And Jupiter was enraged by this theft. And so he took Prometheus and put him up against the Mount Caucasus rock and tied him there, chained him there, and then sent a vulture every day to tear out his liver and devour it. And every night when the vulture departed, Prometheus would lie there in agony, but his liver would regenerate, so that in the morning, the vulture had breakfast. And this went on and on. And of course, we, as mere mortals, aren't quite as good at doing that trick of regenerating our livers every night, although some of us probably wish we could. Um, and I should also say that if the vulture had chosen another organ to devour, such as Prometheus's heart, he wouldn't have been around to tell the tale. But the idea here is that regeneration is the reactivation of developmental processes, such as those that gave rise to your liver in the first place, to restore the missing and damaged tissues. Now, is that the same as wound healing? It's not exactly the same. So let's look at two different tissues in the adult, both of which can get injured the liver on the right, which is healthy at this point, and a healthy muscle. Let's imagine that both of these are injured by a crush to your muscle or by some sort of damage to your liver. Now, in response to injury, the first thing your body does, of course, is to close the wound as fast as possible to avoid loss of blood.